kind of all this stuff. Mm -hmm. My arms need to get longer as I age doing this. Okay, so. What is it? It's today, Wednesday, February the 10th. And thank you for attending because I know you'll show, I'll show up any minute now. So I have a sinus headache going, so. Not been a fun week with the, you know, constant face pain makes getting things done a little challenging because I just feel like I'm walking around in suit. Anyway, uh, I guess, yay, Angela remembered. It's early. I'll forgive you, Angela. I know it's early. You don't have to say anything. See, that's the good part. You don't have to say anything. You can just watch. Listen to me ramble on. So what came in since last we met? Small, couple of boxes, actually. No new fabric, gosh darn it. I keep ordering stuff and it just sort of goes out into the ether and I don't know when I'll hear about it again. I get a receipt, it's like, yeah, we got your order, thanks. We'll think about filling it sometime, whenever. Okay, so restocking. Sometimes you might think, eh, it's just the regular stuff that might be boring, but it could be just the thing you need, who knows? Like, I got back in the mechanical fabric pencil, my favorite. It's, it's like, you know, it's just like a regular mechanical pencil, except it's got white chalk in it. And this is what I use for doing these super fine lines when I am marking things for quilting specifically. Like if I have to do something on the top of the quilt because it's chalk, it'll, wa it'll uh, rub right off, but not be very, very dusty. Uh, and I know it'll wash right out too. So that's my favorite and it's actually priced. So with the tax, it comes to an even 20 bucks and it is well worth it. Like I said, um, mask bars back in stock. I got a, another buttload of those. Like, this is our mask bar bin. I haven't made up the smaller packages yet. These are all the packages of a hundred pieces. So if you do want smaller packages, let me know. I did have them in store and I can probably whip up some more, you know, in my spare time. Yeah, we'll do it then. So that's that. Uh, and in case you, the Orofil thread cases are back. These are around 20 bucks. They are on the site already. So you get a spool of white Orofil thread, which is 15 bucks anyway, and then you get the plastic case for like an extra five bucks, which honestly, if you've tried to buy plastic, anything these days, it's friggin' expensive. So you can put your nice Aurifil thread in a nice plastic case to keep them all dust free. So there's that. Okay, so the other thing I wanted, somebody asked me about seam rippers. These are back in stock. It's just a regular old, ergon it's an ergonomic one. This is good in your hand. So it's not like the super tiny thing that you have to try and hang on to if you're having like a bad hand day. So I like, I like the ergonomic ones. Um, and they do go dull and it's not worth your time to try and sharpen them. I asked my hubby once and he doesn't have any kind of soft files that tiny. You know, <laughs> Angela has three thread cases. I have, I have, <laughs> I should have some for my own because I have like two of the really big plastic cases where the spools sit upright. If you have like the big fat spools, you know, the kind from that chain store. Yeah, those ones. And then I have like plastic bins with big cones of thread. I have a lot of thread. So, um, yeah, back to the seam ripper back in stock. This one's 650. So, I mean, sometimes you can get the really cheap ones, but this is easier to hang on to. So I have people every so often ask me about seam ripping and I do have some tips, which I tried earlier and it totally didn't work. But so I have this seam that I want to undo where these two fabrics are joined and I've secured the other end of my strip so it can be nice and tight like this. And what you're supposed to do is the short end usually has a ball on it, but this end is dull and this end is pointy. And most people are like, the pointy end keeps tearing my fabric. How do I stop it? 
you're supposed to put the dull end with the ball in the seam. So it's not the big pointy end that goes in the seam, it's the other end. And you put that in your seam like that. See? And I like to hold it flat, parallel to my seam, not up, up and down. You hold it a little flat. And then if I get it in there and get it started, you can usually, I like to hold it tight. Sometimes I do have to cheat and get the bigger end in there. But then when you get going, like see, look how fast that is. You should just be able to keep on sliding right on down like that. Just, it's kind of like when you get the scissors on the wrapping paper, just to like totally, totally go and get that nice clean cut for you. But yeah, it's really simpler than this. Like I said, it's just one of those days. This is probably faster than some of you have been doing it anyway. So even if I have to, something was up when I sewed this seam. I think I used really tiny stitches here. Yeah, looks like, anyway, you get the idea. So that's that tip for you. Not pointy end, use the other end. And if you can't actually zip through stitches like that where you should, that means your seam ripper is dull and you need a new one. Just get a new one. I know I have like six or whatever, but I, Addison ripped a seam the other day. With the, oh my God, my kids. <laughs> do I need to get Addison a seam ripper? Cause I can do that. Nobody knows how to use seam rippers, Caitlin. My daughter-in-law is like leaving comments about seam rippers. Nobody knows how to use them properly. So that's why I did this cause People ask me, what am I doing wrong? Or, did, you know, do they have sharpeners? Can you get me blades? Like, do they have some with dull, end, dull ends on both sides? You need the pointy end to get stuck in there. If we were in yellow, I would say just stop in and I'll show you how to do this anyway. But, alas, that won't happen for at least a couple more weeks. Uh, the other thing that I've been neglecting to mention is the rotary color cutter blades are back in stock but there is a different label on the package. Now, if you bought some before, we had the Precision Tools uh, brand rotary cutter blades, 10 pack, 36 bucks. I mean, that's 360 a blade. That's insanely cheap. So there was a green label. Um, these are the exact same size. It's literally the same package with a different label. That's it. These ones though, Canadian distributor. And I will tell you the little story that she told me because they, all of these are made in China. Doesn't matter what the brand is, they're all made in China. Most of them made in the same sort of factories because this lady who is who owns this company, she was talking to the factory in China because you gotta do specs and making sure they're making the right thing. They sent her a photo of the ones they were making for her and in the background were ones with the Ulfa label on them in the factory. Draw your own conclusions there. I just thought that was, yeah, Doreen said the seam ripper's really slick, just don't go to, towards yourself. No, 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 never. That's why it's like I put one end down and try to hold it tight. Sometimes I just hold it tight if it's a small piece just in my fingers. Just hold that fabric taut, taut, not very tight, just taut, like a bouncy bed sheet and just right through it and boom. Right, my mom's saying the other tip is just, uh, if it's not going well, you can just use this and just go um, perpendicular. If your seam's this way, just go this way and rip out like every third or fourth stitch and you can get trucking pretty fast like that. And then pff, just rip apart and it comes apart. That's if you wanna be super careful. So rotary blades are back in stock. And related to the rotary blades, very, very exciting. I've had people waiting for the large cutting mats. I keep calling them extra large, but they're actually the large cutting mats and it's the extra small that has the extra in it. Anyway, the super big ones, the uh, 24 by 36. Also from the same Armcraft com company who gets the stuff made in China, brings it directly to Canada. I buy it from them and then you buy it from me. That's why these are so less expensive than some of the other brands because 
they're not going through different wholesalers and various suppliers and then finally getting to you, the consumer who wishes to use them. So I got a very huge package. It took three weeks. We were all like me, the um, distributor I bought from, we're emailing back and forth. Like, where the heck is this package? Because the tracking was like, it's in Edmonton. Not Edmonton, Edmonton, Alberta. And it just kind of sat there for like two weeks. Nobody knew where it was. And finally, like, it's like, well, it's in Montreal. And we were all, <laughs> and Angela in the comments was really waiting for one. So I sent her the tracking. So if I didn't check that day, she checked. <laughs> and the day, yesterday, we were both texting each other going, oh, it's on the truck. It's on the truck. So this is the big mats. But I wanted to talk about the difference between this and like the Ulfa mask, which the Ulfa is usually considered the gold standard. And I've tried, I tried a Dritz cutting mat, which is Dritz is one of the notions brands that are out there that are like in chain stores and everything. And that one I was not, it was a blue and I was not, had that one, as soon as you started get cut in the groove in that, the top layer was flaking off. It was, it was bad. So the one thing I noticed about the Armcraft cutting mats though, is they are thicker. They are thicker than the Ulfa ones. Like that, that is pretty darn thick. And as I mentioned, they are double-sided. I know the Ulfa mats say they're double-sided. You can cut on the other side and there's no markings. These ones, there are markings on both sides. And I have compared them to the Ulfa mat. They are accurate. So if it's 10 inches on the Ulfa mat, it's 10 inches on here. If it's 10 inches on your ruler, it's 10 inches on the mat. Yeah, it's me thumping it on the floor. I forgot to tell Emma I left them on the floor uh, around the corner and Emma had to turn a light on to go look at some fabric. It's just whoosh, right over top of the mats. I don't know where to put them because I, I like to sit them flat somewhere. You don't have a shelf big enough, so. Anyway, these are in, and the only other quirky thing about them is the mat is indeed 24 by 36, but the Ulfa mats, the markings go to 24 inches and 36 inches, and the mats are slightly bigger than that. There's like a quarter of an inch extra. These ones, the mats are exactly 24 by 36, so the markings are, are an inch short, but you still have like the 35 to 23. And honestly, I don't use the, I don't measure anything quite that big because I have two mats on my table. So if I need it bigger than that, I'm not too worried about, it. not too worried about it. So, I mean, 50 bucks for a large mat. It's a steal. I left the link to the, to buy this in the shop in the description of this video. So it's right there. You can just go buy one. Just go leave a note, what color you want. I've got it on there and all the other mats are all listed too. So you could buy yourself a new cutting mat, make your, make your sewing room all nice and coordinated. It's it just makes you happy. Anyway, so there's that. I did show the colors. Uh, tea time. Let's all stop and have a drink of tea. Mmm. So I'm a little behind on things. I had my granddaughter over for the weekend. The oldest one, Izzy, she's hilarious in all kinds of ways. And one thing she wanted to do, since it was just her and not her little sisters around, oh my God, little sisters. Ugh. Not that I have any little sisters, but you know, apparently it's not a fun thing. <laughs> Can't do anything with them around, God. She's 10 going on 16. So I had the sewing machine all set up. Since people aren't coming in, I have it all set up in my, I was gonna say craft room, in my shop, which is great. I've actually set up a second table so I could still have, the, cause I was using my cutting table to sew on, but then I, I the machine was in the way and I had to clear up what I was sewing. So anyway, Izzy did a lot of sewing and I showed her how to sew strip sets. These are called strip sets. If you're not a quilter and you're watching, you just take two strips of fabric, sew them together. You take two more strips of fabric, sew them together. And then you take this strip of two and this strip of two, and then you sew them together. So Izzy is sewing a bunch of strips together like this. 
And like this, this one I think we trimmed on one side. So we will keep going and we are making a scrappy quilt. She did a lot, she sewed this one too. And she also learned how to iron with steam. It was Dangerous Crafts Weekend. It was not the only Dangerous Craft we did. So this is a wider one. So she will keep sewing these strips and we'll make really, really long ones. And we'll trim all the sides even. So that we have just basically columns of strips and then we'll sew the columns together till the quilt is as wide and as long as she wants. Probably just nap size. Some of these longer, longer sets we can just trim. We can just trim like, oh, we just need one this wide, we'll stick that on there. Because some of the strips aren't very wide. Yeah, yeah she got a little set like this. We'll just put a little skinny column in there somewhere. So that's what Izzy did. And she wanted me to remember it was hers. So she wrote that on there. And then I told her that was a permanent Sharpie and that's going to be in her quilt forever. She's like, yeah, I know. Just had 10 years from now, she's going to look at that and she's just going to go, oh my God, why did I do that? And then she's going to look at her work and go, oh my God, some of it's not straight, Nanny. How did you let me not do it straight? But she was getting a consistent seam at the end of it. So I put a lot of my stuff in Ziploc bags. So that's that. And I've been sewing in some downtime or when I needed a break. I This is how many blocks I've made in the past um, probably month. I'm making a scrappy quilt. It's obnoxiously bright because, hey mom, do you recognize any of these fabrics? I'm sure you do. Good morning, Maxine. How you feeling, Maxine? So I'm making this up, like, look at these. These are like an inch. And no, some of these aren't accurate. So I had to sew like the two strips to do these four patches. So I showed her how to do that. Um, yeah, this is going to be obnoxious. It's just a scrappy, scrappy quilt. It's the trail mix pattern from All People Quilt, which I put in the last, last Friday's newsletter. I'm not putting the borders on because this is going to be big enough anyway. So there's that. And I might give it to somebody that I'm married to. If he's really, really good. <laughs> yeah, it totally is. So that's what I've been working on when I'm not working on shop stuff. stuff. And that macaron quilt, which I haven't gotten back to. I think, remember? So I was in another guild meeting, one of the guilds I work with, and they have been making pin cushions. They had a pin cushion, not really a challenge, just like, just more of a, since, since we can't meet and it's a smaller group, it's here's a pin cushion pattern, make it. They had a sewing Saturday where we were all on Zoom and you could sew if you want to. I was packing orders. I stopped in. Honestly, mom, I, Emma was watching me sew and she picked up a piece of the like blue fabric with the little flowers and stuff. And she's like, this, Emma's like, this fabric just won't die. I'm like, that that's like the last piece and Emma's like burn it I was tempted anyway so uh, another guild is making pin cushions and they were asking about what to put in them I have crushed walnut shells I mean if you're making you can get the crushed walnut shells at pet stores but it's uh, like a like a 20 pound bag who needs that's a lot of pin cushions so I went out and bought one because of course I did so I have smaller bags I did not list this on the website, but I am going to. That's what I didn't write down. <sighs> Walnut shells. So that if you are making pin cushions, you can just buy a little bit and try it out and see how you like it. The other tip that I got from one of the members, because I encountered this myself, is where you sew this, sew the little seam after you turn your pin cushion through the opening and you fill it with your walnut shells, put in a little bit of fluff or batting or something and then hand stitch it closed because these are gonna leak out of your hand stitch seam. I do little tiny British lady um, hand stitching when I'm, when I'm really going to town at it and that will still come through. So yeah, gotta have the right stuff in your pin cushion because if you do just fill it with the polyfill batting, it'll actually rust your pins over time. This makes it nice and heavy, and I like these for in my pin cushions because it's just a comfortable weight. But then you have your pin cushions double as pattern weights 
if you need to hold down papers for, for things and, and cut around templates. Double duty. So that's another thing I have to do. Another thing that I'm tinkering with on the site is I have a lot of these drawstring elastics for your mask making. These are the nice little soft, um, I'll open this package because somebody wanted a black and white mix. I just had them listed on the site with a picture of the black ones and then if you scroll down there was a picture of the white ones. So, And most people didn't say anything so I had to assume they just wanted the black ones, which is what most people want. So it's just this, there are 50 pieces of these. So. 50 pieces makes 25 masks. So it's got the little draw, um, doohickey on the elastic that you can adjust and the two ends that you sew in the seam of your mask. You put that, you put this part over your ear. So you've got lots of room and they're very, very soft. They are so soft. It's like little tiny t-shirt strips. It's really, really comfortable. So I got them in black and white because that's what was in stock at the time. So I do have tons of white left. But the other ones I got in, there's not a lot of black ones left, but I have no fear. Because I have gray ones now. I have a lot of gray ones. And I have a lot of navy. So there's the navy. Something I was tinkering with it this morning on the website. So the other colors are not showing up yet. It is on my to-do list. If you leave me a comment or something or nag me about it. I will get to it faster. Oh, Maxine's not doing too good. Sorry, I'm out here that, Maxine. I hope you get better soon so you can, like, so When I get, like, sick or headachey or, or really bad, I can't sew. And that's that, to me, is the worst. It's like you sit there, you can't really do much. And, you, you know, if you could at least sew, that would be great. But, no, you can't even do that. Um, you can use the beanbag pellets for a pin cushion. They're just really, really expensive. But if you bought them for another project and you had leftovers, yeah, I might, I, I, I might use them, but I might use them um, with some more st regular stuffing at the same time so that the, the beanbag pellets are sort of maybe sink to the bottom and then the puffy bits is what your pins are actually sticking into. So there's those. Are we all tired of making masks yet? keep forgetting this came in and I, it just came in like Friday so I didn't get to adding it to the site but everybody says have you got the stuff that goes in the masks I've got the stuff that goes in the masks I've got lots of stuff that goes in masks but the big thing is when uh, about a month ago when they said use the use the polypropylene stuff this is this is the polypropylene cambric type Type fabric I can't even remember how much it is but there it is if you see it I mean honestly it's very very similar just to, to the disposable the not disposable to the cloth bags that you buy at like the dollar store or the, the grocery store <laughs> no Caitlin you cannot pay me to make masks I know they're for my wonderful grandchildren but Didn't I, I made them some masks Jeez, I suppose you need some too but anyway, this is the mask filter. If you want a filter in there, if you're going out a lot, I'm just avoiding going out and staying in. So this is going on the site. Like I said, one of the things I didn't look up ahead of time, I hit the ground running this morning with a headache. So super fun times. So there's that. Okay, we have new markdowns in our sale department. I will only show you some of them. I have marked down the country market line. This speaking of masks, uh, I made a mask. I made some masks for Ron. Uh, man, was that last summer? Seems so long ago. But I made Ron a mask out of this fabric in particular, and he likes to wear it to the grocery store when he has to go in because it's very grocery themed. So yes, Dor Doreen, the polypropylene is there, and I will post about it. If I can have it in the newsletter by Friday, that's what, I, that's what I'll do. And I'll make sure there's a link in the newsletter. Oh God, somebody hold me to that. I hope I don't forget. It's been a very ADHD week. I got like, I've got like three sticky notes on my laptop right in front of me. And my, you know, here's what I'm talking about. Right? Yeah, I did that. I know, right? Good thing I'm cute. 
So yeah, there's lots of this fabric left. It's all nice spring and garden themed and vegetable and there's snow outside and you want to look at this and oh wow, this is really soft. Um, the other stuff it has, I meant to bring over the bike print. It has a bicycle print, that's <laughs> super cute. It has a very popular sunflower print. It's in red and blue, but I'm sure some of you would rather have the red. So this has been, this was normally $20 a meter and it is now, oh, it's listed per quarter meter and it was five per quarter, 16. It's now 16 a meter, which is still pretty decent. I mean, and it has a wonderful text print about bees and sunflowers and country mo road mercantile, like, like an old timey um, newspaper kind of thing. Lovely text print. It's also available in cream. So there's like, I didn't bring them all over. There's easily a dozen more bolts in this particular line. So you can make some very cheery, springy, summer type things for your, whatever you're making. Placemats, table toppers. They would be sweet table toppers. Very, very sweet. Um, I'm almost done here because I'm petering out, but. Ron said, I still haven't showed back, shown the batiks. We got a whole pile of batiks in and I kind of forgot to keep adding the um, pictures. I got distracted, see. When I logged into the back of my website and I wanted to put more pictures in, there was an issue with pictures. Long story short, there was a certain amount of products over last October and September where all the pictures got duplicated to the tune of five or six or seven copies of every single in image on the web server. So I kind of got distracted cleaning those up because you don't need five or six copies of every single image of every single thing in your shop. That takes up a lot of space. Carlia is new. She wants to know where I'm located. I am located in Hanwell, just outside of Fredericton. And we do ship. We totally ship. It's a flat rate of $15. Or if you buy more than $150 worth of stuff, it's free shipping. We'll totally get that out to you when I, you know, pick my, go pick, pick the kid up at college, go to the post office, ship some things, come back home. So yeah, Fred, just in New Brunswick. So it says you are in PEI. So that would get to you fairly quickly. So yeah, today, since I have a headache and I have to do low brain things, low brain activities, I'm going to make sure we get more of these new batik images up so you can see them and buy them because lots on the bolts. For some reason, I have two bolts of this nice um, beige. And Maxine wanted to know if I had any fabrics in light to dark grays. Yes, if it's regular, all the grays that I have online are all the ones that I have. Uh, you should be able to, when you're on the shop page and you're looking at the main fabric page, uh, in the sidebar, there's a bunch of tags and things. And even if you just type in the search box gray, you should get uh, most of the gray fabrics. I've been trying to uh, put tags and say the word gray on all the gray things, on all the colors of all the fabrics, so that if you're searching for a color, you can see all I've got. And grays is one of them. But if you want gray batiks, I actually have new gray batiks, and they are high on the list of ones I have to get listed. Should have brought them over. Brought them over. So I have some grays and there was that nice beige. There's this, um, I call this one cotton candy. I'm pretty sure the image is online of this one and they're as accurate as possible except for this image because I go get the images from the manufacturer's site. So those sometimes they're like actual scans, they're color corrected, they're the digital mock-ups of the fabric before they even print them. So they are as accurate as possible except for this fabric, which looks very, very yellow. So it's very cotton candy pinky. I mean, it's a bit of a peachy yellow undertone, but the image is very yellow. It's, I'll probably correct it. And like I said, I will add all those grays, but I have some lovely blues. I might've added this one. I just love this bubble print. It's a little lighter than it's actually showing on the screen right now, but it's pretty nice. And I know the navy batiks do well. This one for sure is on the website because I know somebody bought some. If I get in a navy batik, yep, it goes. 
Same with the gray. So I will get the grays up. These are all, how much are these? Oh, $15 a meter. Oh boy. That is a really good price for batiks. I worked hard to get them at that price for you. I really did. So yeah, I will be adding a bunch of those today. So that would be awesome. And as always, I'm going to wrap it up here because I am really, really losing, the, losing my energy. Mm. I need to sit down. I also got distracted because I ordered one of those cutting machines and it came yesterday. So I've been cutting out paper and making plans for papery things. It's really entertaining. <laughs> Isn't it, it yeah, it, I got to do a new craft every so often because, um, or try a new thing, because I've never used one of these things, and I'm sure people are like, you're techie, you can figure it out. Yeah, I've already, you know, there's a, a mat that you put your paper on, and you put it in the machine, and the machine cuts everything out. I've already cut through the mat. Apparently, you're not supposed to do that. So there's that. It's, it's, it's been fun, feeling like a, a newbie again. So... Wrapping it up now. If you have questions about anything you've seen, just hit me up. Messenger, email, contact form, smoke signals. I'm sure my mom will just call me. <sighs> Andrea, what was that thing you showed on your video the other day? <laughs> You'll visit for the weekend. Oh my God, mom. Wait, you see. I'm just, uh, next year for Christmas, I am just making my mom cut paper ornaments for her tree. She just, she has, um, she gets a stick for a tree with no, because she has allergies up the wazoo. So they just get a, a birch tree and she puts all these delicate white ornaments on it and very light things and a bunch of paper snowflakes. And I was going through all these designs I can get for the cutting machine just to send off to the machine and it just cuts them all out. I'm like, yep, mom, 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 mom's, oh, mom's getting that one too. Yeah, I know. I'm such, a, I'm her favorite daughter, you know. So yeah, what was I saying? Told you it was a very ADD day. Then again, when aren't they? Um, so if you have any questions, there's multiple ways to contact me. Leave a comment. I'll find it eventually. Messenger, of course. Email is good. There's a contact form on my site. Uh, if you're my mom, you'll just call me. I mean, if you're not my mom, you can call me too if that's what you prefer. What brand of cutting machine? I got the Silhouette because I was initially looking at the Cricut, but they were all out of stock um, consistently for quite some time. But the Silhouette one seemed to be in stock more often, so I went with that one and grabbed it. Like, even when I ordered it, uh, the Crickets were still out of stock, and some of the Silhouettes were, so. Uh, yeah. So I got a Silhouette, so I'm pretty happy with that because... They had free software, so I actually downloaded the software and tried a few things because you can lay out a bunch of graphics, and I was trying that to, um, I like stickers in my planner. So I was making my own sticker sets, so I was seeing if the stickers were easier to lay out in that software than in something like Photoshop, which I, I have something called GIMP, which is a free open source version of some, that works just like Photoshop. It's a heavy-duty graphics program, so I'm like, maybe use something a little more lightweight. But anyway, I've been using GIMP. So basically, you make your pretty graphic-y things in a graphic program, or you can even do it in the Silhouette software, and then you just tell, in the Silhouette software, you just tell it, you just put the lines where you want it to cut, and then you say, yeah, go cut it on these lines, and you print your thing out on your regular printer, and then you put that paper in your cutting machine, and then it cuts around it for you as long as everything's lined up properly and then you have like your own sticker sets and that's something I'm going to do for the shop I know I have graphics for the shop you have seen me do like just square stickers for my logo I just cut them out regular but I want to do like a really cute sticker set because some of you like stickers also they're stickers they're cute even your grandkids if you don't do the sticker thing whatever I'm working on that so if you haven't signed up to my newsletter, make sure you're on that. Just go to my website, main page, sign up. If you bought something through the site, you get signed up anyway. So, and it goes out on Friday. There'll be a recap of most of whatever's in here as long as I remember because I don't like watching myself again. 
If you have questions, let me know. If there's something you want to buy and you can't find it online in the shop, just ping me and I can send you a special link where it doesn't have the picture if it doesn't have the picture because they hide. Or if it's out of stock, I can just let you know. And yes, Angela, I got the one where you can cut fabric with it too. So one of the things I want to explore is maybe doing kits where the applique pieces are all pre-cut for you. Like, you know, when you get the laser cut applique kits, stuff like that. Yes. Also, I need to make hang tags for products to hang up in the shop. That little piece of cardboard that's at the top of the, that they staple to the bag and it's got the hole so that the shop owner can hang it. But I got to cut this fun. Anyway. And I'm a special princess, and I wanted one. So, uh, okay, I'm gonna sign off now. If I'm related to you, I love you. If I'm not related to you, I appreciate you a lot. I probably love you anyway because I love all my friends. And I wish I could hug you. I'm gonna stop because I kind of miss you. And yeah, I need more too. I will see you on the flip side. You will ping me if you have any questions. You guys know the drill. Hope you have a good day. See you later. Bye.